Good afternoon. Welcome back to Kevin Toll Reads. Today I have a book review of book number 22 of the Agent Pendergast series, Angel of Vengeance. This is a book that was published Tuesday and that I've read. And prior to that, this week, I reread book number 21, The Cabinet of Dr. Lang, which was basically ended on a cliffhanger and rolls immediately into this book. I will say that book 20 in the series and book 21, the book 20 is Bloodless, book 21 is The Cabinet of Dr. Lang, and book 22, which we're going to talk about, is Angel of Vengeance. And they're really all three one long story and of three sections, in my opinion. It's a fantastic story. Uh, Preston and Child, the authors, seem to like uh, dynamic characters and nemesis of Pendergast. And they like to do these little trilogies. And I think it worked really well. And it did so here. I mean, I was, when I read book 21, I was blown away by the cliffhanger. So I was immediately um, wanting to get to this book. The authors did a big apology about that and how it ended. I really think they did a really good job of, of wrapping it up with this entry. I, I will tell you as viewers that I'm really happy I reread book 21 before I moved into this book because I think it really set the stage um, and just really grabbed my attention. I don't think I would have enjoyed as much trying to recollect certain things before I uh, read this book. I wouldn't have enjoyed it that much. But the summary of this book, and I'm really going to touch lightly on this because I don't want to spoil it, and there's a lot here that can spoil it, but I don't really feel like what I'm going to say is any anything you can't read off of a, a good re, re, Goodreads review, you know, cover or the inner flap type thing of the of the uh, cover. So Pendergast, Vin, Vin, Vincent D'Augusta, and a third likely ally are. Go back in time through the time portal. Constance is already there. She's already trying to kill Dr. Lang under the guise of Duchess Ironclaw. And Dr. Lang is, seems to be always a step ahead. And so they come together and hatch this plan of how to deal with him. He's already aware of they're there to kill him. And he's got uh, both siblings or one of the siblings of Constance. And so he is holding that sibling ransom until they meet his demands. And so they all hatch this kind of scheme that is kind of Ocean's 12 vibe with embellished disguises. And, and there's a point to everything they do and all trying to get the best of Dr. Lang. And can they do it or is he going to stay a step ahead? At the end of the story, we get many twists and turns I think are really cool and really added a lot of value. So that's really the premise of this story. It's kind of a caper because you have the time machine may or, may, may or may not be broken. They may or may not be stuck in 1880 in the past in a parallel universe. And so it's a really interesting dynamic. What I really, really enjoyed about this was obviously you have Vincent D'Augusta and, and Pendergast working together and De Vince, Vinny, Vinny, Vincent, he is trusting Pendergast, you know, obviously with his life once again, he has longing and missings that he may be stuck over here in this parallel universe and never meet up with Laura again. And so there's all that going on, but yet he continues to trust Pendergast at every turn. And then you have Pendergast and his unlikely ally that, that kind of work together in tandem and collaborate on this scheme. I really enjoyed it. Dr. Lang has these henchmen that really help. You have definitely conflict that's going to come to a head at the climax of the book, and it does so very, very well. I really enjoyed that. Dr. Lang is a fantastic character, even as a antagonist, and so I really enjoyed that. I will say, even though there's no particular excerpts from this book that really stand out, I, I want to mention this. Preston and Child, as authors, do such a great job of interweaving in their stories culture, place setting, geography, time period placement, food, Language. This book had 
some Latin, some German, some French, and they do so very soft-handedly, but enough that it really makes you visualize where you're at in the scene and you're visualizing that you're in this magnificent dining room and you're having this magnificent meal and you can, it's really amazing how they do that. The other thing that I really wanted to point out too is to be 22 books into a series and be able to continue to deliver these characters, long-standing characters with such impact with such a fresh take with a conf with conflicts and confrontations that don't feel forced just to put out a story I think is amazing because it really reads very well again I really feel like 20 book 20 through 22 really are just one story being split apart into the three books, like three parts. And I think it works really, really well. And so um, in terms of rating, I gave this a 4.7. It's definitely one of my higher rated books for the month thus far. It's it's fantastic. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I read it. Obviously, I read it in two days. So that, that should tell you anything. Um, I can't wait to get a copy of it. As you know, I've got, I think, the first seven or eight books... Um, in the Pendergast uh, series, I'm recollecting those. And so when these come out on paperback, I'll definitely pick them up too as I work my way through the reread and uh, do reviews on those books for the channel next year. So anyways, that's my review. I hope you're having a great day and uh, I will talk to you later. Thanks.